Okay, the recorder's on now, so you can go ahead and just uh, basically tell me what happened. Oh, okay. Well, on the... Uh, uh, excavation there, uh, that had, you know, for the Ark of the Covenant, uh, <clears throat> primarily I was interested in just the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. And uh, as I did the excavation down the cliff face, we ran into cutouts and we ran into cross holes in the bottom of this uh, ancient quarry mm -hmm. that showed that this was a crucifixion and execution spot. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Romans crucified people there, of course. The Jews, uh, because of some of their special arrangements with the uh, <coughs> Romans, they basically stoned people there. And Stephen is one of the examples of what took place there. Yes. And uh, so anyway, once we found that, place, I knew that uh, uh, well, basically that I needed to get inside that uh, escarpment because there was several indications that, that it was just a system of broad tunnels yeah. in chambers and, uh, and that I needed to basically just go chamber by chamber, tunnel by tunnel, and whatever, and systematically go through there to uh, see, uh, you know, until I found the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. or until I didn't find it, one or the other. And so, anyway, we found it on January 6, 1982, at approximately 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, when I found it, uh, it was in a situation that well, I had not anticipated or expected. That was, it was in a chamber that was totally filled with what appeared to be debris. Right. Uh, and what turned out to be basically uh, a bunch of materials, uh, furnishings of the first temple, covered first by animal skin, and then that covered by boards, and then these covered by stone, uh, just whatever they could get their hands on looked like. Mm -hmm. It looked like it had been done in a hurry. It looked like they just grabbed everything, whatever they could get to fill this uh, place. And uh, I'm still a little fuzzy on why that would uh, be done, but I don't think I, you know, to know everything. But uh, when God does something, I just I do know it's done just perfectly so. But on the occasion of my fourth visit in uh, to the area, I was going to make another attempt at uh, getting some video footage. Get some what? Uh -huh. I was going to make a, an attempt at getting some video footage. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, to that time, I have not had any success with any kind of uh, reproduction that attempt that I made. I, I included Polaroid cameras, a 35 millimeter cameras, and uh, <clears throat> a VHS right. camera video system. So anyway. I went in into the chamber, and uh, the, 
and lowered myself in there. And of course, there, the thing that became apparent immediately was that the place was totally clean. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody had done what I had decided that I was going to have to do, and that was to clean every hole with debris and everything out. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess I should say a couple words here. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant was not covered in all this uh, debris like everything else was. It was in a separate container. Uh -huh. A thin uh, wall of stone box. And this uh, extended from the floor, which uh, I didn't know at the time. Uh, you know, the dimensions are whatever. But anyway, the box extended up to within approximately three inches of the ceiling. Was it sitting on top of something else? Well, uh, the, the fact of the matter was, Bill, that I never did get in there and measure everything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I really don't hope. Okay. Uh, looking back on it, uh, uh, I would have had to have been there when the cleanup took place in order to know yeah. all of that, and I sense it was not there. And, uh, but uh, anyway, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, was set in a manner under the crack that came down, extended down from crucifixion side above so that the blood went on the top of the mercy seat. Right. Right. And then, anyway, when it was all cleaned up, situated and positioned, it was still uh, appeared to be in that very same position, even though it was no longer in the box. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's several things rather remarkable about uh, well, had happened there, the place was cleaned up, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was sitting against the, the wall at the east uh, end of the cave, and, and the cave is not perfectly oriented east, west, north, or south, mm -hmm. so it's just on the eastern end, basically, Okay. of that, and uh, Behind the, the, this uh, crystalline wall uh, that emits uh, the colors of the rainbow. You know, this is the wall behind the ark? That's correct. Okay. It's a vertical, vertical wall. Now, the ark was facing you if you were standing looking at it, is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. At that point in time. Uh -huh. And uh, so I got a phone call on this that uh, I'll share which was kind of unusual. It's one of the things that made me decide to talk to, to say something about it. Mm -hmm. And that is, I got a phone call from this fellow, and he says, Ron, he says, would you describe what the Ark of the Covenant looks like? It looks like to me. And I said, well, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I have a... You know, I just haven't uh, done that. And uh, so, anyway, I said, why do you ask? And he seemed a little distressed with the whole thing, you know. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I had a dream. And I don't remember, you know, if it was the night before he was talking to me that day. Or anyway, it hadn't been too long since he had had this dream, and he said, I've been praying since I heard about the Ark of the Covenant that the Lord would let me and see what it looks like. I you know, just had a real burden to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So he said, I had this dream, and I was in this chamber in this dream, and he said, and the Ark of the Covenant was right in front of me, basically. Mm -hmm. He said, however, the wall behind the Ark of the Covenant, and he described it perfectly, you know. What you'd say. Right. And he said, 
I got so distracted by the, the colors and all of that of this rainbow that I did not look zero in on the Ark of the Covenant itself. Mm -hmm. And he said that the green went away without my having uh, had a good look at the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? Yeah. So that was a bit of a surprise and a pleasant one, I might add, because yeah. it indicated that God, you know, wanted people to, didn't mind people having a description of it at least. And uh, at least this one fellow, he didn't seem, well, uh, shall we say, more unusual. Or, different than anyone else or several other people that had asked did seem to be an honest guy and all of that. I yeah. think he could have made that description without having seen it. But, you know, there's no way it could have happened. So, um, any, anyway, uh, at that point, uh, I said, well, just be grateful that you got to see inside the chamber. But I'll verify that that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah. But then I said, I guess we probably ought to do something to give a general idea of what the Ark of the Covenant looks like. So that time I decided to get Jim Kinkowski to, to work me up something, you know? Right. And uh, so, anyway. Uh, back to the experience of when I went, got in there. Now, the light, the room has its own light. Since I, I made that entrance in, but it didn't happen until I had gotten inside the chamber and was standing on the floor of the chamber. And I did all my getting in in the dark. Mm -hmm. And so when things kind of lighted up, uh, I was really shocked by what I saw. Uh, and that is, the place had been cleaned out, and that there were four people in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so basically, I was going to ask, what are, you know, what are you doing in here? Because I'm the only person I knew of that had a permission or the right to be in there. Yeah. And uh, at that point, I apparently I became aware of my physical conditions altered to the point that, that I knew I was in the presence of angels. You know, I said these were not just people. Yeah. Because I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move, I couldn't talk, I couldn't do anything. And so, anyway, at that point, uh, and this, you, know, you basically just keep in mind that I was very, very uh, stunned by the whole thing. Right. So, the one angel talked to me and briefly said that they had been watching over the Ark of the Covenant ever since Moses had put the table stone in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, God wanted everyone to see this yeah. at a particular time. And so anyway, he told me to set up my uh, uh, your video camera. Yeah, I just set, set that up on the tripod, and which I by that time I you know, kind of drummed into my head. So, you know, you usually got a better picture if you use tripod. So anyway, I set this all up mm -hmm. and aimed it at the. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant at that point. And I turned it on and went off. <laughs> and uh, 
angels, one took the corner of each of the ark of, of the mercy seat of the Yeah. And lifted the head. And uh, when the one angel had talked with me, said, uh, you know, get to take the stone out of the ark of the covenant. So I went over and leaned down and uh, up the mouth. Ron? Yes. Could you speak up just a little bit? I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I leaned in and picked up the uh, table for stone and, uh, and backed away. Mm -hmm. And they lowered the mercy seat back into position. Okay. And then I just stood there with the table for stone. And the angel came and got them and took them from my hand and put them on a stone kind of a shelf or ledge, whatever. Right there next to the wall. Right. You know, part of the wall at the, near the exit. Uh, the original exit? Yeah. So that would be, I guess, on the south side? Uh-huh. Okay. The south side. Of the... And so, anyway, the... Uh, um, now, l let me ask you a question here. Because okay. when you told me this before, you told me, you know, you took the tables of stone out. Yeah. And then the angel told you something about the tables okay. of stone. Yeah, it told me that it had to do with when mm -hmm. these were to be shown to the world. Right. Uh, two things were stated. One, that if I was faithful, I'd have the privilege of sharing this. Uh, the second was that when the mark of the beast law was enforced, that uh, shortly after that was when okay. it would take place. And here is a little bit of a conundrum. It, it, it wasn't stated mark of the beast law, it was stated on the Sunday law. But I tell people, and I think that it's wise to tell people that since it's not lying or deceiving, mm -hmm. is that when the mark of the beast law is enforced. Right. But he, uh, but the, but the angel said Sunday law. That's right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly do it that way. Okay. And uh, so. Now. Um, if I remember correctly, at that point you said, I don't, you didn't know what to do with the tables of stone, because you were holding them. Uh, well, I didn't, uh, what, the thing I didn't know what to do with mm -hmm. was later, was after I had taken the video back to my room and checked it to make sure that I had the, you know, video. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to do with that. So I went back to the cave to ask the angel what I should do with that. Okay. And put it on the table for stone. Right on the shelf. Yeah, right on top of the table for stone. So they both there. And so as far as you know, that's where they are at today? That's right, as far as I know. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, did the angel indicate any kind of sign that you would be given other than what they said about the mark of the beast law? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, I kind of got you off track. Okay, after he took the tables of stone, put them on the niche there next to the uh, original exit, I, I kind of interrupted you there. Yeah. Uh, what happened after that? Well, at that point, uh, uh, I left through the old entrance. The original entrance. Right. And it, was that the first time you'd been through it? That's the first time I had been through it. So that's how you ended up finding that? Uh-huh. Okay, and they apparently cleaned that out, too. Well, it, it had, they had cleaned that one out. Yeah, I, I had done some work uh, prior to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my work... Uh, Apparently, well, just to be perfectly honest, this whole system, if they want you to see it and get through it, it's easy. 
you know, creeping easy. If they don't, you couldn't find it to save your life, or I couldn't. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's not just as simple as walking through a tunnel? No. Yeah. It, it's not. Uh, I know that sounds a little science fictionish, but... Uh, well, that's the nature of uh, caves and tunnels, yeah. if you've been in them before. And it's also the nature of if God wants you to see something or not. Exactly. Exactly. And so as far as I know, I'm the only one that has been in there. But I'm not there all the time, so I really don't know uh, about this. Uh, you know, I don't know for a fact that nobody else has been in there. Yeah. Right. Now, there's some, several people that have lost their lives, directly or indirectly, uh, in attempts to either move or prevent the uh, uh, continuation of the work on the Ark of the Covenant. Right. All right. Now, I do not want to get into details on that. Okay. Uh, for simple reason that, uh, uh, and I think you probably know this, that the bishop of the Anglican Church, who is the, basically the head of the garden team, died within mm -hmm. a month and telling me that I couldn't actually be out there anymore. And that was r shortly after Reverend uh, White uh, retired? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, there's a whole bunch of people that, uh, you know, I didn't say that. I never said that he died because of that to anybody. I didn't verbalize it. It's just, it's just a matter of fact. I verbalized that, that yeah. there had been people that had died, and they put two and two together because, you know, working there, they, they were got the order for me not to be able to do anything anymore. When they got that routine to that, the fellow died. Right. So, of course, they put all that together. Yeah. I don't know that it's really be necessary to address that aspect of it, because nobody right now is asking about that. Okay. Well, uh, the only other thing... That. I beg your pardon? Maybe we ought to just skip that. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing that would relate to the you know anything happening in the chamber and that type of thing is back when those uh, six uh, people uh, got uh, got killed trying to get in there to the ark and move it. Yeah, and uh, this is why I say I had rather not. Okay. Because uh, I know you told me that story, but uh, yeah. okay, well that's fine if, if you don't want to go into that. Uh, well, the situation is that we're. You know, as we get on the uh, page, web page, with a bunch of stuff, uh, at some point, some of the people that are, you know, keeping an eye on me, and uh, they may not like the direction I'm taking or something. Mm -hmm. So I figured that I would just lump it into a statement that there had been those who had lost their life directly or indirectly. Okay. And just let it go at that. Okay. Can I just ask you one thing on a personal yes. note, and this won't be any part of what, what we're talking about doing here. Uh, who was it that initiated those men going in there trying to move that thing, do you know? I didn't ask. Okay. Uh, the, the idea was that it's in occupied territory. They wanted to get it in unoccupied territory. Mm hmm and uh, ordinarily I'm all for that. Yeah. It's my, I sure don't want Yasser Arafat ending up with it. <laughs> right. But I know he isn't going to. Right. So, uh, it's not really an issue. Right. Yeah. So uh, but that, that was what I was given to be the reason. Okay. But as to who made the decision on that, I, you know, I didn't bail. Right. Are, are the, the golden poles still either uh, on or around the ark? Well, they they are. Uh, 
not in their slot anymore. But they're in the chamber? Yeah, they're in the chamber. Okay. Uh, uh, the impression I got, and or I may have gotten this, well, hmm. I came out of there with, I think, a lot more information in my head than was verbalized by the angel. Mm-hmm. Well, if it makes any sense to you or not. Yeah, I think so. And uh, so the bottom line is that I think the Ark of the Covenant is fulfilling its final destiny, and that is that it is the proof to the universe that God's Son actually gave his life in order to redeem the human family. Okay. And uh, that story is going to stay throughout eternity. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to add? I think that's about it, Bill. Okay. All right. Ron, I appreciate it. Uh, well, I appreciate you looking after these things, uh, because, uh, you know, I get on, have to have this pain medicine, and it drives me a bit, and I, um, you know, it's nice to have somebody that, that I can trust to kind of help me get these things uh, up and on there, so uh, well, it won't be misstated or whatever. Yeah, we'll do, you know, we'll do everything we can. Uh, listen, um, uh, I'm probably not going to get a chance to work on this until after I get back from the meeting in New Orleans. Oh, okay. Because I'm leaving uh, tomorrow afternoon, and I've still got some things to do around here to, relative to, you know, getting ready for Sabbath and for the trip. So I probably won't get to work on it until uh, early next week. Okay. But I'll be back in touch with you and email you copy before we post anything. Okay, that'll be great. Okay, if you would... Uh, and I already talked to Mary Nell about this, please pray for me in this meeting because I, I really think the Lord's uh, presenting an opportunity here. There's going to be a large number of people there. Okay. All right. We sure will. Okay. Thanks so much, Ron, and take care, and know that I and many, many others are still praying for you. I appreciate that. Okay. Very kindly. Uh, I really do, and I can tell that that's happening. Okay. And, uh, you know, I just want you to know I appreciate you, Bill. I, I, I th- thank you, Ron, and, and you know we appreciate and love you. Let me ask you before I go: um, Did you get that newspaper with Ross uh, just exactly the way you wanted it? Well, we got it pretty close. Mary Nell learned how to do, you know, what he does. Yeah. And and we got it. Uh, quite close. There's a few little typos. Okay. Uh, and uh, I went, I'm going over that sheet by sheet. So, uh, were you thinking, wondering about maybe getting some copies for handing out down at the meeting? Well, no, there's no time to do that now. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm looking down the road a bit. Well, it shouldn't be very long. It should be, you know, we should be able to, by the end of next week, have it up and printed, I guess. Oh, really? That quick? I think so. Okay, well, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay, well, Ron, look, I'm going to let you go because I know you're tired. If there's anything I can do for you, either you or Marinelle, give me a call, and uh, we'll do what we can. Uh, We're, as I would say, uh, things are uh, more or less than getting them into a routine. Uh, yeah. Uh, things keep changing a little bit, but uh, anyway. Okay. Trying to learn to live with all of this. Yeah. Okie dokie. Thanks, Bill. Okay. God bless. Bye bye. Uh huh. Friday, one seventeen p.m.